Good day. Good day to you. Buenos dias. Welcome. A todos. Welcome in. Welcome Bi- in. Bienvenidos. Uh, we're excited to be here. Estamos muy contentos estar aquí con ustedes. This is Ministers with Mugs. Somos Ministerios con Mugos. Con tazas. Yo soy Pastor Nate. And I'm Jay. <laughs> See how we switched that up there? Hey, uh, this is Ministers with Mugs, and uh, just want to welcome you guys in. Thank you for joining us one more time. Uh, hopefully, this isn't the last time that you join us, but... Might be the first time, though. It That's true. If it is, what's up? Welcome in. Um, you can listen to us on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, on YouTube. We'll have a link on our Facebook page. Uh, we are just passionate about... Talking about the church, talking about life as Christians, and how we can uh, encourage you, empower you, and uh, share any knowledge that we've gained over the last few years. Yup. I think that's important. So yeah, welcome in. Uh, once again, Pastor Nate, Pastor Jay, his mustache is still growing, and starting, and to, starting to do that. Starting to curl on its own now? Uh, I kind of trained it to, to be good. Okay. Kind of like... My uh, beard still has not come in, so. Oh, come. How old are you, Nate? 32. 32. Yep, it won't come. <laughs> it <laughs> You're done. not looking good. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get started today. As we start every single episode, we are going to highlight the mugs that we are drinking our fine coffee out of. First off, Jay, what coffee are you drinking today? Uh, I'm drinking a uh, Costa Rican coconut blend. Did you mix the two? Well, there was already some in there, and I just threw coconut in with the Costa Rican. Okay. Because there wasn't enough for a full pot, and that's how much I've had today is a full pot. So we should go about 57 minutes today. Uh, Other No, you'll talk fast enough. Interesting thing is um, I actually forgot my mug today. So what I did is I got a bit of ingenuity and uh, went and got one. It's not really and this one says Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made ingenuity. everything beautiful in its time. He's made everything beautiful in its time. And it has scripture on it. So just remember, Nate, there's still hope for you. Okay. Oh, yeah. burn. Uh, just so you know, going to the store and there's buying a mug time. was not ingenuity. That was called an errand. So yeah. and A very ingenuitive errand. Yeah. So why Ecclesiastes 3.11? Because the other option was a unicorn. <laughs> so why not a unicorn? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I just figured this would give you hope. Yeah. He will make you beautiful, yeah. Nate. <laughs> he's made it. <laughs> by, just wait. It's by in his allowing time. me to grow a beard? It's in is his it, time. Is that when he's going to What make if me What if we prayed for you to grow a beard and tomorrow you just grow, grew on like it just happened? He can do it anything. Can, it can only be like If he created beards, then he can he can grow a beard. That I don't doubt that at all. But maybe it's not in the cards for me to have a beard. I've seen too much, Nate. I've seen too much. I know. In a good way. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Good things can happen, man. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to go a bit more on the sentimental side oh. uh, for my mug today. Uh, here we go. I uh, played baseball with a buddy in high school, and his name is Jordan Meyer, and he passed away a few years ago. Um, hmm. Yeah, he was a younger guy. Obviously, he was my age, so it was probably when he was 27, 28. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, we... Some of his buddies from high school, some people that I played baseball with in high school, started a memorial golf tournament. So this is the mug from the third annual Jordan Meyer Memorial Golf Tournament Pandemic Edition because it was last summer uh, when the pandemic was rampant. The what? Pandemic. Okay. Am I saying it weird? Yeah. Pandem. Is it the pan part? No. Pan- panda. Panda? Pandemic. See, there's an E in there, not an A. Pandemic. There you go. I, that's what I said. <laughs> it's not. We got we got video to prove it. Pandemic. There you go. Now I feel like a <laughs> more. <laughs> Sorry about your friend. <sighs> okay, so uh, I just ruined a good moment. Yeah, I, Jordan, actually it was me. You're not watching, but this is the mug from that tournament. So Yeah. Cool thing about this mug, I forgot to mention it. See, you can screw the unscrew the bottom. Uh huh. Take this lid off. Put it here. Koozie. 
What? Yeah. Ter- can I get one of them? Uh, probably. Ter- Terribly difficult to wash because there's a huge gap down here. So you wash it and there's tons of water sitting in there afterwards. How often do you wash your mugs? All the time. Oh, you do? At my house. I rinse them. I don't wash them. I rinse them out. Yeah. I, I wash the mugs I use at my house. I don't usually wash the ones here yeah. as much. Well, it's good to have you with us today. We're going to get is. right into it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get right into it after five minutes of chatting. So. We have mugs. We have we coffee. Do. We have the scripture out, ready to roll. Let's oh, do it. Man, and man. there is so many different avenues that we could go down today. Because I don't know if you guys have been listening to the last two weeks, but we've been talking about the local church and our role, um, you know, scripturally what it says. So the first time we ended up talking about the fivefold ministry, which that teaching is still coming. We will do an entire episode on that eventually. Okay. Probably not today unless Jay starts talking about it again. <laughs> we also talked about, uh, you know, just our role and our responsibility. And yeah. Um, so today I kind of wanted to touch on something that you had mentioned last episode. Okay. While you get that question ready, just okay. let me say for anybody listening, if there is a topic that you'd really love us, or if there's something that we say that you'd like, Hey, uh, I'd like to know more about that. Or I'd like to get some content on that. Um, just shoot us a message. You know, um, the, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Most of the things that we've learned, we've learned from other people and, Truth. uh, and whether it's personal revelation from the Holy Spirit through Scripture, or whether it's you know we've read a book and we it really it really resonated with us, uh, we everybody learns you know from others. And so, um, so if you have any questions or there's something you want us to do, just feel free to send us a message or uh, put a comment there on the YouTube on, on this or any mm-hmm. of our other things. Yeah, and that would help us with topics too, because yeah. we want to do things that are pertinent, relevant, and relevant. Yep. So, pandemic. 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 Yes. So, some one topic that you had touched on in our last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you were talking about the responsibilities of a Christ follower in a church. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember, but he listed them off and named, like, I don't know, 12 right away. So, I, I wrote down a few. I okay. just want to talk a little bit about each one, I suppose, and then... Um, you know, what that means, what it looks like for, uh, for someone in, in a church. So one the first one that you said was service. Yeah. And in our, back in our first episode, this was one of the things that as a church defines who we are and what we do in everything that we do. So that aside, what does that look like for the individual in their community and in the local church. Okay, so um, one thing that I know is when we talk about local church, like I said, you have to think about yourself first. You have to think about how you um, how you are a part of something greater than. And if you if you just grab what they are, then you'll never become what you're supposed to be. And so when we talk about local church, uh, it's always personal responsibility first. Um, when you look at um, the disciples, when they most of them when they wrote. Um, their epistles to the church, um, a lot of them said, uh, this is Jude, or this is James, mm-hmm. this is Peter, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that was their first, and their, that was their identity, is they were called to serve. And the Bible talks to us about the difference between a slave and a servant. A mm-hmm. servant, you know, chooses to serve, chooses to lay down their life, chooses to give of themselves. And so um, we have this mentality, especially in Western culture, that we come to church for something right. rather than to give something. And we have to realize that every single person um, called by Jesus becomes a bond servant, which they have bonded themselves. They've mm-hmm. yoked themselves with the ministry of Jesus, using their talents and their abilities to step up and do something. Now, local church provides opportunity within yeah. um, our ministries and our kingdom principles and, and, and to do what we are called to do as the local church, which I think is extremely relevant. Um, but, that does not negate the personal responsibility of servanthood in your walk with God every single day of the week and everything that you do. And so if I'm a true servant of God, I want to be I want to be able to hear him, I want to be able to get his word, I want to be able to respond and be obedient to what he has to say. And God calls people into local church ministries not so that the ministry can be great but so that they can grow and to be sent out once again. Mm-hmm. And so service if you can choose to find a place to serve within your local congregation, um, it is it is an incredible training ground and first step into serving those around you and serving those um, 
in your life, whether it be your family, whether it be your coworkers, whether it be your kids, um, to learn how to serve in that area. Um, because, you know, we, one of the things we say is Jesus came and washed feet. Mm-hmm. And uh, he washed Judas's feet. He washed Peter's feet. Mm-hmm. He washed all of his disciples' feet. He came to serve the hurting and the broken and the lost. And so uh, if we want to be Christ-like, we have to understand this idea of servanthood. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether we're in full-time ministry, whether you are just coming into the knowledge of Jesus, whether you've never accepted him, it's so important to understand because it will draw people unto him because right. it's his it's his principle, his idea. So that's servanthood. Yeah, for me. so what I'm hearing from you is that oh, oh sorry. Uh serving and how we understand it, it's not a task. It's it's more of a mm-hmm. lifestyle. Yeah, and it's really, I, I think a lot of times people you, you hear hey, we need people to serve here. Uh yeah. yada yada yada. They think it's a task, but it's not. No. When you are operating in the gifts and talents and even even outside of gifts and talents in the ability to love someone well. Um, so if you if they need help in the nursery one week and you say, hey, I have two hands and I won't drop a child. OK, I can do that. Some people say, well, I'm not called to children's ministry. Well, you're called to love Jesus well. And Jesus yeah. said, let the children come unto me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people want to want a place or a pulpit on a, on a Sunday or the microphone on a Sunday. But, um, when it's time to scoop snow or when it's time to to do something, um, I know the people who have that heart and that ability to do that. Mm -hmm. If God has given you the ability to do something, um, it should be a privilege and an honor to be able to do that to, in order to see his kingdom expanded, right. To love people well. Right. So we got to create and foster this lifestyle of becoming a servant Yeah. so that it's not just you fill in a role at your church, it becomes ingrained into everything that you do. As Because you're a Christ follower, even if you're not at church, you are still serving because yeah. you have the opportunity to show Christ through that. Awesome. Yeah. Just remember, Jesus didn't have to wash feet. He was just obedient yep. to what he saw the Father doing. Absolutely. So the Father wants us to serve people. So then this kind of transitions into another um, responsibility that you had mentioned is the use of our gifts. Yeah. So what is our responsibility in the church <laughs> for the use of our gifts? So um, I think I kind of kind of went over that a little bit, but um, I think it's so important to remember for everybody that um, you are uniquely crafted. Like mm-hmm. you are uniquely made. There's no one else on this planet who can do what you do the way you do it, say what you say the way you say it. Um, there's no one on this planet who has the same ideas and thoughts and the same heart, the same compassion. There's nobody who's gone through the exact same circumstances that you've gone through. But yet there's this um, overlying idea of the kingdom of God that no matter who you are, what you're about, what your gifts and talents are, it's applicable no matter what to every single uniquely crafted individual. Um, and so having these responsibilities within um, within church is number first and foremost to understand our first responsibility is to the father is mm-hmm. to worship him is to honor him um, and to walk according to the spirit. Was that the question? Yeah, that yeah. was good. So if I'm someone that is relatively new to uh, faith, my walk with Christ, mm-hmm. how would I find out what my gifts are? Um, one of my, when I was a youth pastor, I had this sermon, I had like four sermons and I just preached them differently every week. Cause I think kids at that age, they need Forgot to quickly. understand, well, and they need <laughs> to understand identity. There's, yeah. you know, you look back on your life and there's certain times in your life when you were going through certain things. And I think that there are applicable things for that just kind of are a blanket thing that mm-hmm. everyone needs to hear and everyone needs to know. And, um, so when you're looking for your identity and when you're looking for your purpose, um, the bottom line that I've the the best way that I can say it is you do what you love and you love God while you do it. If you can't love God while you're doing something, you're probably not doing a good thing. (laughs) You know, if you can't love God um, while you're doing something, it's probably not something you're called to. But if we can first and foremost understand that um, our purpose and our goal in life is to love God and then do do the things that he's placed in our hearts, the talents, the abilities, the passion. So, you know, you got some people who are just incredible thinkers. They're, 
Um, they're, they're, maybe you're a mathematician or you're a scientist. Well, can you do that and love Jesus at the same time? Yeah, well, then you are fulfilling the purpose that he's placed on this planet for because he crafted you and created you uniquely. Mm-hmm. And so we, the problem comes when we try to cookie cutter or we try to mold everyone like someone that we respect or someone that we honor, someone that we love because God hasn't created anyone to be that person. Mm-hmm. There's some characteristics. There's some, there's some kingdom principles that we should all walk in together. But um, like you and I, we are both called to different things. We're called to lead differently, but Mm -hmm. yet we're both called to love Jesus well, love the Father well, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so when you find those passions in your heart, passions in your life, whether it be in in athletics, in Mm -hmm. art, in in science, in teaching, um, whatever it is that God has placed inside of you, you just passionately pursue God and then passionately pursue God the things that he places in your heart. When Jesus said, I do nothing without first seeing the Father do right, it. Right. Um, he might have had his own ideas and his own thought process, but G- but the Father had a purpose and a will for his life. Mm-hmm. And so when he follows those things, you see the fulfillment of the purposes and the plans. Jesus would never have picked the plans and the purposes that the Father had for him on his own. Mm-hmm. But yet he fulfilled everything. Why? Because he understood that if he continues to pursue the Father and continues to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, then everything mm-hmm. that the Father had would be fulfilled. So yeah. if you're just starting out, if I would say, listen, do the things that you love as long as you can love God while you do it. If you mm-hmm. can't, if you if you love teaching, teach people well. Love God at the same time. So I don't know if that's yeah. and then, answers your question. And then let him, for lack of a better word, let him infiltrate every aspect mm-hmm. of what you're doing then. Not mm-hmm. just like in your heart, oh, I, I love God, so I'll go ahead and play my baseball game. But it's like, while you're doing that, you're resembling, you're showing Christ in the way that you live, in the way that you talk. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't compartmentalize God in our lives. I think that's a big deal when it comes to pursuing, um, Mm -hmm. pursuing your dreams and pursuing the plans and the purposes that God has had for you is you can't compartmentalize portions of your life or keep God out of portions Mm -hmm. of your life. Um, As a servant, as a bond servant, Mm -hmm. you have chosen to relinquish your own hopes and your dreams and um, the things that he gives back to you are better than anything you could mm-hmm. ever imagine or hope for. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's a scary thing to see someone who, um, who believes in God, loves God with all their heart, but they keep a portion of themselves for themselves and they give themselves over to their own selfish desires is what the South scripture um, defines that they give themselves over to their own selfish mm-hmm. desires. Um, and if you do that, then the fullness of God can't be made manifest in you and through you. And so the greatest version of you is your life laid down to God. Mm -hmm. So cool. So then to go a step further in that, um, you know, you're talking about our, our, you know, our personal gifts and passions. Mm -hmm. So how, how would someone go about discovering their spiritual giftings? I think they go right along with, okay. Um, you know, we're all u- uniquely created right. and we have these, we're drawn to certain areas. We're drawn to, um, we have different tendencies and different thought processes and, and different emotional reactions to similar circumstances. And that's not an accident. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing in our, nothing in creation, in the way you were created, the way I was created, the way anybody was created is an accident. Um, it's all there to fulfill the purposes that God has placed us on this earth for. And using those things outside of a relationship with the Father creates this um, division, creates um, chaos, creates um, frustration in our hearts and in our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, You see people who are incredibly gifted and talented and you would say successful on the outside, but how many stories have you heard of people who create this amazing success for their lives, yet everything about their life is falling yeah. apart. They deal with depression. They deal with the same anxiety and fears. Um, success does not create identity. Mm-hmm. Your success will never create your identity. Your identity is formed in him, how he has made you and how he has molded you. And when you, when you submit that and place your life on the altar, he then begins to come and success begins to look different. Success becomes righteousness, peace, joy. It becomes this fulfillment of life that we get to walk in. We have the honor to walk Mm in uh, when we surrender our life to Jesus. And so um, when you're talking about your spiritual gifts, I think they go hand in hand 
um, with whatever. It, it, it's not, you know, I say it's not rocket science mm-hmm. unless it's rocket science. <laughs> you know, it's not rocket science okay. unless you're passionate about rocket science, and then it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's like some secret formula. There's no secret well, just, to you being you. I was just checking. No, to no, make no. Sure, no. you weren't holding out. I on wasn't being something. like. I wasn't like coming against <laughs> Step you. Step one to finding your spiritual gifts Nate, by Jay. He has made everything beautiful he in has. this time. Okay. So uh, talking about the responsibilities of a Christ follower mm-hmm. within a church, we've talked about serving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've talked about the use of our gifts and our spiritual gifts. Yeah. Uh, so how about let's talk about reaching the lost. Um, I had, I was having a conversation and I'm going to go just a little bit different direction when you, okay. when you're asking me this, um, what's the great commission? What did Jesus, when Jesus went to see, yep. went back to heaven, he literally divided his, it's called the Ascension gifts, mm-hmm. the fivefold ministry. It's called the Ascension gifts, but he gave the same, he gave the same commission to every single gifting. Mm-hmm. So you, real quick, if you could go there. Oh, I don't need to go there. Okay. You, well, tell tell our viewers where it is. Matthew and, 28, verse 19. Okay. I'll go there so I can get it properly. Yeah. So when so Jesus sent it into heaven, and he gave this job to his disciples and to all those who were there, because there's more than just disciples there. They had just seen this, um, this, this amazing opportunity to, to see a resurrected Jesus, and you know, the disciples were talking about it mm-hmm. and they gathered people together. And there's a reason that it said they went back and there were more than just the disciples in the upper room. Yep. Why? Because a lot of people had seen Jesus. A lot of people had heard the story and and became believers. But this is what Jesus gave to his entire church. Okay, Matthew 28, I'm going to start in verse 18. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now, with that in mind, Mm -hmm. ask me your question again. So, uh, responsibility, (laughs) Christ follower in church, uh, what is our responsibility with reaching the lost? So, in church, out of church, it doesn't matter. We have a, and and this is something that I'm, I'm figuring out and walking in right now and just coming into this revelation, we have misconstrued what it means to reach the lost. Okay. We have put the, we, we have made, and I was talking to my friend Mike uh, about this yesterday. Um, we have made, we have made the goal, we, we, we become a destinational type ministry. Um, and we say, okay, the goal is we want to get people saved. Mm-hmm. We want to, reaching the lost means going and find someone who's lost and get them saved, get them to believe in Jesus. But was that the commission that Jesus told us? No. Is that the job that he ever gave us? Did he ever say, I need you to make people believe in me so that they can go to heaven? No, his last words were, I, I want you to go. Yes, we got the go part right. Mm-hmm. But I need you to make disciples. Right. And I need you to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he'd already gotten all, he had already gotten all authority from heaven and earth through the, the cross, mm-hmm. his burial, his resurrection. Now he was ascending at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf. And so as believers, our job, our number one goal, and like like our friend Richie, Rich Seltzer, is it Richie Seltzer <laughs> says that it's yes. it's not the great suggestion, it's the great commission. Mm-hmm. Um, go into the world and make disciples. So our goal cannot be salvation for people. Yes, the a fruit of finding people to make disciples, to pulling people out of where they are into his to the revelation of his goodness and his love. And, and, and their, their created purpose, a fruit of that is salvation. A fruit of the kingdom of God is salvation. But salvation is not the goal for the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Salvation is already bought and paid for. It's already, uh, it's already owned by the kingdom. Yeah. Our job is to make disciples. And that involves relationship. That involves service. That involves conversations. That involves... It doesn't involve... Um, one of the things I say is I don't want to talk someone into something because someone else can talk them right back right. out of it. But if someone encounters a good and loving father through my life, then they they have the opportunity to step into the same process that you and I are walking through as believers. Um, salvation is a fruit of the kingdom. Discipleship is the goal of every believer. Mm-hmm. It's to go into all the world and make disciples. Now, we don't like that as much because that's not quick and easy and it's long term. Yeah. That's, that's, 
that's relationship. But what part of God isn't Mm -hmm. long-term? Yeah. He's eternal. He's everlasting. And we have such a short frame of mind when it comes to the kingdom. And I think that God's breaking that in us. And he's, he's allowing us to see that discipleship within community, um, invitations, open doors to community. Um, the local church is not about going and getting people saved. The goal, the goal of the church is going and finding people who need the love of God, who are willing to walk on this journey with us to make disciples Mm -hmm. of all nations. And so, um, the role, one of the roles of the church is to empower people to not only be discipled, but to make disciples. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Of getting our minds away from the goal is getting people saved. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking to an evangelist, they're going to fight you on See, that, this. That is going to be my next question. But what happens if an evangelist goes out and finds people who are hurting and broken and lost and brings them into a five-fold, a, a good, where they can get teaching, they mm-hmm. can be pastored, they can get a, a word of life from the prophetic, when they can be have the bigger vision from a, an apostle and an apostolic ministry. It, it, evangelism on its own, own is a portion of the kingdom of God, but it cannot be our entire theology. Mm -hmm. It cannot be our entire goal system. And so discipleship is our goal, but can discipleship happen well outside of a successful or uh, the body of Christ being the body of Christ? I don't think so. I I honestly don't think so. Um, And so I think that we have maybe our goals a little backwards and we have to Mm reevaluate the kingdom of what that looks like and what what the church is supposed to do for people and be for people mm-hmm. uh, because it's made up of people. Right. So so then how have we as a whole maybe misunderstood the role of evangelism? Um, because I think the short definition description that most people would assume to evangelism is that it's going and finding those who don't know Jesus mm-hmm. and allowing them the opportunity to meet Jesus and believe in Jesus. Yeah, and I, that's true. So but, the, how, but can can evangelism stand on its own mm-hmm. when it comes to people's walk with God? If you want to say, yeah, I'm called to go get people out, well, where are you taking them? Mm-hmm. Like, that's not that's not what Jesus told us to do. Yes, yes, it is important. Yes, it is vital. Yes, like listen to me. Don't tell, I'm not I'm not saying don't go find people to get them saved. It is vital. It is one of the it's one of the des- greatest desires of the Father is that all men shall should be saved. Mm-hmm. It's his heart. It's his plan. It's his it's his heart's cry that his children wouldn't be lost and broken and hurting out there, but. I think the father set this thing up so that it was a process that included, it was so inclusive to every single person. Every evangelist is not going to go witness to another evangelist Mm -hmm. that can in turn do what they do. Okay. So evangelist goes out, they find people, they, you know, they draw people in, they grab people. But what happens when that person comes in and they don't find their place because they're not an evangelist? Mm Mm-hmm. They're, I mean, that's not their primary goal. Everyone's called to evangelize, but it's not their primary gifting. Well, then they feel lost and like they're not enough. And right. if they try to be something that they're not, then they that produces failure in their life within the kingdom. And then it, we see the kingdom through the lenses of our own perspective and our own experiences. And it creates um, distraction, division, and unfulfillment within the kingdom. Well, yeah. there's nothing about the kingdom that doesn't produce wholeness. Mm-hmm. And so if there's parts and portions of the of church or anything that is causing you to feel that way, you need to really reevaluate what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and then be obedient to what he's telling you to do. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I in no way want to devalue evangelism, but w- the church has become, mm-hmm. we have to go evangelize. That's the main role of the church. No, the role of the church is to make disciples. Mm-hmm. Evangelism has to happen in order for that to take place. Okay. So does prophecy, and so does an apostolic ministry, so does pastoring, and so does teaching to create the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And the, those are all used to create the the opportunity for us to make disciples, to baptize, mm-hmm. to teach, as this passage shares. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that's good for us to honestly take a, a, a real look at our view of evangelism, and I don't think it was out of 
um, you know, improper desires that that's what the church has become accustomed to when it comes to evangelism. It's just not the full picture. Right. And I think the American church especially has an an incredible opportunity because I think so many um, things within the Western society and culture leads us to a missional mindset Mm -hmm. of being able to support missionaries, being able to, um, to lead in this idea of going out and mm-hmm. defining people who are hurting and broken loss. I think the Western church does um, a pretty good job of that, but I think that we've created, um, created such a specific design for what church has to be when the design of church, according to Jesus, looks a lot different than yeah. our own heart and our own thoughts. Cool. Well, that's good stuff. My thoughts. No, they're, they're worth something. Yeah. Okay, let's try to get through two more of two these. Two more. Okay, two you, more so you need me to go quick. Not necessarily. Well, no, we're good. Okay. Two more. Two more. Here we go. Uh, so let's talk about the responsibility of, okay, oof, trying to decide. Let's do family and fellowship. Family and fellowship. Family and fellowship. The responsibility of a Christian within a community of Christ. Yeah, uh, this is a pretty easy one to me. All right, um, good. Because so then I we can it. get to the second one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we were created. Like, and I know I'm talking a lot about creation, how we created, but it matters. It really does matter. We were created for fellowship, yeah. first and foremost, with the Father. When we when we think everything, everything we process, everything we see, everything we hear, everything we smell, it goes through this um, through this filter um, of that the way God created us. It moves through this filter um, that we perceive things based on. Um, our community, our perspective, uh, our experiences, everything that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. There's things that trigger you immediately simply because of your own past experiences, because of um, something that's happened, whether it's within within you or within your life. We process all of things. Now, when we process things through the the relationship that God has called us into, then we begin to process things the appropriate way. And we be, we can see things for what they truly are and the truth behind them rather than the lenses that we've walked in and that we've we've uh, experienced through our life. And so when you walk in a relationship with God, first and foremost, then you process everything that comes in through that filter of his goodness, his love, his purposes, his plans for my life. Mm -hmm. If you believe in all honesty that he is good and loving, then you can see that when, when the, when the Bible says that all things work together for my good, for the good of those who are loved and are called according to his purposes, that can be absolutely true in your life, not outside or looking back on circumstances, but in the middle of circumstances and storms. All things can be good. Why? Because I'm processing the circumstances, situations of my life through the relationship that he's called me into yeah. through creation. Yeah. So what does that look like for believers? Well, we're called to love one another. The Bible says they will know that you are Christians by what? Your love for one another. Your love for one another. So when we begin to walk in love for one another, when we're bickering and we're we're fighting and we're doing all of these things, um, we can have different stances on view, or we can have different views and stances on things um, that are extra biblical, that are outside of the kingdom of God. But within the kingdom of God, which should be our priority yeah. and should be our main focus, those things should be so great within our lives that the other things cannot separate us. Just like in relationship with God, it says, what can separate you from the love of Christ? There's nothing. He, he lists all of these things mm-hmm. that should not be able to separate you. But within relationship with people, we sent, we seem to get, we, we, we move that from the purpose of relationship and we say, well, we're separated because of this and this and this and this. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not so. You're making enemies out of people when people are not your enemy. Yep. Um, there are. There are absolutely principalities and authorities and things that are at work in this world, but that does not give me the right to make enemies out of individuals. I have to look past those things and say, I was created for relationship with these people so that the love of Christ and the light of God in me can shine through to whatever else is going on, to whatever circumstance or situation. Mm -hmm. So um, our goal in, in church is community, relationship, family, and as we're learning this, we're learning ways that we, we've done it poorly, and we're learning how to do it the right way. Um, and we've gotten it wrong before, but we always want to keep improving. That should yeah. be the goal of our ministries is Absolutely. to continue to improve. So I said I had the, an easy answer for that one. But that and you was, didn't. I didn't. That's, that's, but that's the honest truth. We're yeah. created for relationships. Absolutely. Without a doubt. With God and then with others. Okay. All right. And then last one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this is... This is a good one. Everyone's uh, going to love this. The responsibility of giving. 
Oh, I like it. I know, I do too. Yeah. But I think it has a pretty negative connotation with a lot of people. Yeah. Just because there's uh, been plenty of... Uh, Plenty of times, instances where there's been manipulation behind the giving of money and blah, absolutely. Blah, blah. Oh, so you want me to tell? So are we talking about the giving of money or the idea of giving? Because it's different. Yeah. Well, I th- yeah. I mean, one goes with the other too, but yeah. yeah, they are different. So when it when it comes to giving, um, I think as it applies to local church, mm-hmm. um, we have to look at giving as an act of worship. Mm-hmm. Um, True. I look at the the blessings and the things that God has given me and the opportunities that God has given me and um, in every area of my life. And the goal is to pour that back out. Now, the local church is called to support different ministries, is called to um, have a voice within the community, and, and it's called to um, go out and find ways to make disciples. And if the goal of the church is to fulfill the role of the kingdom of God, then people within the kingdom of God come along and support that, then it becomes their worship to continue to support the things that God is doing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it's not um, the church needs your money. We serve a God who walks on gold. Mm-hmm. Like his economy, I say this all the time when I pray for, for, for some of these things, his economy is different than the economy of this world. Yeah. And so we don't, we're not, we're not as a, as an organization, whether it be the church as an individual in my own life, I am not confined to the economies of this world. If I abide by the principles within the kingdom of God, I'm going to work hard. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have faith in him. I'm going to be a person who gives above and beyond everything that I can of my energies, of my time, of my finances, of, you know, whatever it is that God has placed right in front of me. And if I have the ability to, to support a work that someone else is doing as well, then what an honor to be able to worship God in that mm-hmm. area. Absolutely. So giving, um, when it, when it comes to, to the local church, if it is law, it will hold you accountable according to the law. If it is your heart, then you're held accountable according to his grace mm-hmm. and his love and his favor and blessing. And so I never want to withhold that, which God is calling me to give yeah. in any yeah. area of my life, yeah. especially finance. And if you have a problem giving, in the area of your finances, um, and you know you have it, but you you have a problem giving, then you need to look and see. Okay, is th- has money become a source mm. of either identity or become an idol or become a god in my life that has a hold on me, and I've compartmentalized that portion of my life away from God? Mm-hmm. Then you're literally pushing. If you're pushing God out of the process, then you're also pushing God out of the opportunity to receive the blessing that He has from you. And if if we believe that God is a God who walks on gold, then why would he not withhold? Why would he withhold right. from his kids? Mm-hmm. So I don't want to push God out of that in my life. I want to allow him to come in because his blessings mm-hmm. are going to be there. I yeah. don't give to get, but I right. give because I understand the principle of his goodness and mm-hmm. his love. Yeah. You don't give to get money, but when you do give, you get you get blessing from him in the form of you know hearing him speak clearly to you, feeling his, his guidance and direction in your life and and just the overwhelming sense of his presence in your life. I mean, it absolutely when you, if you, you like just talking about like the actual act of writing a check, giving of finances, like it gets you closer to God because it makes you rely more on him and yeah. he's worthy. He can handle it. Yeah. And yeah, I, I know that uh, giving is, is something very vital to my wife and I's life and how, how we, we've learned the hard way. So if I could encourage you, anyone tithe, I learned the hard way, not that I was cursed or anything, but yeah. I saw what it was like when I took myself out of a position of blessing because I wasn't giving unto the Lord. And yeah, even beyond finances, we, we it is our responsibility to be giving and generous people because yeah. it is worship and it is honor to God. Yeah. <clears throat> the last thing I want to say about this is how do you receive fruit? How do I receive fruit? Anybody. I mean, if you're out there, how do you receive fruit? Like that? Is that what you mean? You sow seed. Oh. I th- <laughs> okay. <laughs> didn't realize we are going to do riddles today. No, it's not a riddle. It's like, okay, we want fruit. Yeah. You want blessing. How do you get that? Yeah. Sow seed. Yeah. Like, how many parables are there about the seed and the sower? And, yes. and you know, the even the parable of the talent when mm-hmm. it came to that. 
how are we stewarding well that which God has given us? You steward well by giving, mm -hmm. serving. Yeah. We talked about serving. Yeah. You know, all of these things, using our talents and abilities to propel the kingdom of God and advance the kingdom of God for, forward. And it's not dependent upon you. He's already doing it. We just get to partner with it yeah. and see the fruit of it. For sure. Because we've sown seed. The God will not be mocked. Whatever man sows, that also he will reap. That Therefore, if you sow nothing, you receive nothing. Mm -hmm. If you sow goodness and love and hope and truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ, guess what? You receive from those all things. of those things. Yeah. For sure. Best way to get fruit? So seed. So seed. Yeah. For sure. See, I thought you were That's going gardening, thought you were gardening going a different direction. I thought you were saying with an open hand, because if you have a closed hand, oh, yeah. you keep what you have, but you don't get any more. Mm -hmm. See, that's where I thought you were going. Well, see, that's why Nate, you're the that in you charge. can you can make it work too, right? <laughs> well, you can't so seed that you're holding on to. So there Boom. you go. There you go. So you have to open your hand. <laughs> Just like the sower on the top of the Capitol. Yeah. He's got his guys little gun your sack and <laughs> Man. So we covered quite a few of Yeah, uh, we've gone for 41 minutes, I man. Know. Well, 40 yeah. minutes. Yeah. So um, there is, man, gosh, we just keep talking about it, but I'm not going to. This this was really good today. So Push the button. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right. So that's <laughs> wrapping up. Uh, we thank you guys for joining in. Comment, like, share. Tell yes, us what you want us to yes. talk to you about. If there's something we've talked about today you want us to go more in depth over or give you scripture for, give you good Perfect. books to read, Perfect. please let us know. Yeah, we can do all of that. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. We can do all things through Christ who gives us yes. strength, bud. If, uh, Philippians 4.13, right? Yep. That's not on a mug, but it should be. Make, uh, if you could just go ahead and pray for Nate, that he would become beautiful. <laughs> and it's time, Nate. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 3.11. Yes. So subscribe on Apple iTunes, Spotify Dude. Podcasts. Uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, all that jazz. It's good, man. It I, is. I enjoy being with you. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you guys because it has for me as well. Yeah, it's fun, man. We'll see you next time. Peace.